Pompeii. I'm guessing you read the title, so let me explain. Since it's Valentine's Day, and we all know the best way to spend it is at home, alone, playing a difficult version of a children's game, I wanted to go with a meant-to-be duo of Pokemon. And in Hoenn, there are four of them. Not counting legendaries makes it three, and Plusle and Minun give me more of a brother-sister-like vibe, which... ew. Yeah, and these two? They, they just creep me out, okay? And that leaves just a pair of two fragile little buck types for me to work with. Yeah, way to rub it in, Birch. My full rule set is, as always, in the description. The standard, if a Pokemon faints, it's dead, not being able to level past the gym leader's ace, and no usage of items, you get it at this point. Well, let's get straight to it. I'll skip over the cutscenes and go straight into the completely legit starter selection. I named the Volbeat Clyde and checked to see I lost the coin flip on his ability, but at least got a plus attack nature. Then I slightly EV grind him for HP on the nearby Wurmples, because I'm gonna need a lot of luck and as much HP as I can get to beat Roxanne's rock types. I try to take on the first gym trainer, just to get a taste of how hard will the gym leader actually be. Basically, my strategy is to confuse the Geodude and start setting up double teams, occasionally healing with Moonlight, and slowly chipping away with super inaccurate and weak tackles. This trainer is easier, since his Geodudes don't have any Rock-type moves, which sadly is not the case for Roxanne. Once again, I picked a challenge where the first gym leader is one of the toughest fights in the game, and on my first attempt, I forgot to level to 15 and just stayed level 14 while challenging Roxanne. So you can probably imagine how it went. Jiru just annihilated my little bugger with two rock tombs in a row, despite my four double team setup. Attempt 2 once again got illuminate instead of swarm, but at least this wall beat is adamant, which is possibly the best nature I could ask for. This time I EV train for HP for Roxanne, but also speed and special defense for the future challenges to come. I also assert dominance by stalling both of Roxanne's little helpers. And after being close to leveling to level 16, I face the devil again. Geodude comes in, and Clyde is ready for revenge. Confuse Ray and Double Team Strat works better this time, and it effectively brings Geodude to yellow. But then, Rock Tombs start to hit. Thankfully, that's nothing a little Moonlight couldn't fix. Eventually, Roxanne wastes a potion on the poor pebble, and after another 5 minutes of stalling, another potion, meaning the Nose Pass won't get healed. The Rock Tombs are all gone at this point, and Tackles cannot really do much to all these. After the battle timer goes to 20 minutes, Geodude falls. No Spaz enters, and I use another Confuse Ray, which actually gets a self hit. And I realize I definitely don't have enough PP to beat him. So I just click double teams while No Spaz is still confused and misses move. After No Spaz hits a Rock Tomb, I have to use my last Moonlight as well. Then I get another self hit, but right after, a rock throw hits to bring me back to 30 HP. I get lucky and Nosepaz misses another rock throw, while I hit with my very last tackle. Meaning I'm officially out of moves, and Volbeat will use Struggle from now on. Another rock throw misses, and I'm able to bring Nosepaz to red. And then I get a third miss, and Nosepaz hangs on a slip. Nosepaz was so out of it, he missed even a fourth one in a row which I don't even want to calculate the odds of. But regardless, Volbeat's final struggle takes him out, earning me the first gym badge. <laughs> yeah, this challenge will be fun, right? I finally get a 100 accuracy attack in Quick Attack, and I take the letter from Steven Stone early this time, because I wanted to get the second member to my team. But then I realized I would overlevel past Brawly fighting Mei, so that was off the table. Brawly time. This gym was a cakewalk compared to the last one. Quick attack confuse ray combo just slaughtered Machop, even through his double bulk up setup. And after getting a second turn critical hit quick attack on Makuhira, it was basically just over for the sumo dumpling as well. Which brings us to the previously mentioned Mei fight. The team she uses has only one possibility to hurt me, with Whalemur's rollout, but the poor kickable looking fish never got it off and instead just decided to go splash? Namo, despite being super effective, doesn't have enough damage potential to hurt me, so a couple of quick attacks and we're through. I don't think I need to talk about Grova. And it was time to get my second half to my team, in Roselia? Hold up, that's not right. 
There we go, the special attacker for this playthrough, who I obviously had to name Bonnie. I took on the wind straights to get the macho brace so my EV grinding wouldn't be so tedious. And after edging to level 24 as close as I can, it was time for Watson. I lead with Illumise for her debut against Magnemite, and it immediately goes for Flash as Cherryberry cures the paralysis. As I land another Flash, Magnemite goes for a second Thunder Wave, this one being permanent, and after a few more flashes, I switch into Wallbeat for the real star of the fight, who gets paralyzed by Thunderbolt on the switch-in. Then I confuse the poor Magnet as it hits a Sonic Boom, and Moonlight heals Clyde as the next Sonic Boom misses. After another evasive setup and a heal sesh, a bunch of quick attacks take him out. Voltorb is the weakest link in Watson's team, so a Confuse Ray and quick attacks can easily take him out, allowing me to take breaks healing the poor Volbeat as he chips Voltorb. Magneton is last, but sadly double teams have no effect here since Magneton has the never missing shockwave. I have to just switch between Confuse Rays, Quick Attacks, and Moonlight for the heals to stall the definitely Hoenian ace, but in the end, Bobby doesn't get fully paralyzed and manages to earn me Watson's gym badge with a quick attack. And it was time to stop some Team Magma shenanigans, including the big boss Maxi lurking around Mount Chimney. I mean, he only has three Pokemon, and with the Intimidate having Mariana as the lead, I had to lead Bonnie, and just like in my Emerald half cap run, immediately went for Flash. After the dog got to minus 6 accuracy, I just went to Clyde and set up double teams as well. But with Mighty Anna just occasionally missing, it proved way more difficult and time consuming than I thought. The newly acquired secret power then made Maxi heal the satanic popper. For just a few extra turns and after bringing Mighty Anna back to yellow, I managed to confuse her. And actually get the self hit. One more quick attack and Maxi had to send out camera. Thanks to my double team setup, Camerupt had a really hard time hitting me as well. But after getting hit by a hard ember, Clyde once again got the confusion off. Camerupt didn't hit himself but still missed the next ember, and I decided to heal so I can have more HP for Golbat. But so did Maxi. Greedy focus energy by Camerupt. Just one more hit was enough to take him out. Bringing just the previous dimension Golbat, who also missed the first wing attack, as a secret power did about a third. Another wing attack did more than half to Clyde, implying a critical hit would knock my little bug out. Thankfully it didn't happen and Golbat was the one hitting the ground. I then got to the level cap by EV grinding special attack on Nummels and attack on Machops, and got ready for Flannery. She is way easier in Ruby than she is in Emerald because she has two Slugmas and doesn't have the bulky camera. And the first Slugma got taken down by just two thieves, the second one being a crit and the second Slugma, I just flash to start, and as she goes for light screen and then sunny day, I get a freebie and encore her into the moon. So I'm free to switch Clyde in for some casual double teaming after a single secret power brings Slugma to yellow. After I see the encore ended, I slay the slug with just one last secret power. Here I get the very important protect over quick attack. Flannery sends her ace Torkoal in, and I go for another double team praying for a miss, which I actually get, and I use Protect to slowly drain over his TP, making Turco almost no trouble without it. After I see it went for Attract, I start attacking again with Secret Power, which does a reasonable chunk as Turco tries to seduce Clyde, which sadly works and Clyde stays immobilized way more than he should considering his partner is just on the bench behind him. He finally breaks through for a couple of hits as Turco seems to run out of body slams as well. Another secret power paralyzes the turtle, and the next one isn't quite enough, enabling Fenrir to heal. I eventually manage to bring Torkoal's HP back down, and with Clyde realizing there's only one Pokemon he should be immobilized for, he hits one more secret power, ending another gym fight. I then stumble across a pair of glasses which just perfectly fit on Illumise, and with my team's style improved, I take on Norman and his two slackings. As you probably figured, Protect will make this fight significantly easier. The first Slacking gets paralyzed by Secret Power, and by clicking Protect on his attacking turns, I'm able to almost take him out without taking a hit. But Norman heals him, so I have to waste a couple more PP, including Moonlight, but Slacking still falls. 
Vigorod is out next, and even his facade is hard, but not quite hard enough. And Norman wastes a Hyper Potion on him as well, before another solve of secret powers is able to bring him low enough and Bonnie finishes the job with her teeth. I wanted to have her out so she can flash to Slaky. But after two flashes and a close call, I switch Glide back in. Slaking luckily misses a facade and I was able to set a double team on his low concern. And then got the protect, hit, protect tactic going until I ran out of both protects and secret powers. After setting six double teams, Slaking hits me with a faint attack, so that was wordless too, cool. And here comes my new strategy, wasting all of my PP until another struggle session. Which thankfully works, because Slaking just goes for facade again and again. Even though he has a really low chance of hitting it, and he should know that. After a couple of turns of loafing, Slaking eventually goes down to a small, struggling beetle. I then used definitely one of my team members to serve and to get a shockwave TM. I also beat up my annoying rival again and go straight to Venona, who is actually pretty scary as well. She leads Swellow, and I lead with Bonnie, who just recently got a new spark to her. Swellow tries my own strategy against me, but neither Bonnie or her shockwave really cared. After a single hit just barely missed a kill, I decided to go for a free flash, as I knew Venona would heal. Which she did, and then double teamed again. Which is weird, since the AI saw my move at this point, but sure. After another shockwave brought Swellow right back to red, I expected Endeavor here. Which also happened, but thanks to my flash luck, it missed. So one more shockwave took her down. Eliper got sent out just to get fried too. Then the big bad Altaria comes out, and I wanted to get some damage in early, as she dragon danced. I encored her into it, gambling this entire run on my ability to take Altaria out before the encore ends. I started chipping away, realizing that it might not be entirely possible, but Bonnie just proved me wrong with the last shockwave which managed to crit. Man, like the second crit I landed in this playthrough, and it was probably the most crucial one it could be. Anyway, her Skarmory fell to two shockwaves as it just sand attacked me in the process. And I was free to go to Mars Deep City. I got the Giga Drain TM and the Return TM, which I would never use, but hey, at least I got it. Liza and her kinda cancelled brother were up next. And they are playing a duo run themselves, having just the previously mentioned creepy rock couple. Well, turn 1 already took half of Solrock's HP with a single Giga Drain, and I double teamed with Volby just for safety, as Lunatone used Calm Mind, and Solrock just went for Sunny Day. I went for double team expecting Hypnosis from Lunatone, and I wanted to have at least one Pokemon awake. Then I took Solrock down with a second Giga Drain. Secret power into Giga Drain for Lunatone didn't really do that much anymore thanks to his Skull Mine setup and a normal type resistance. As I protected and Giga Drained again, I finally got the Hypnosis. Sadly, it was into Illumise, which just slowed the process a bit. A plus 2 Psychic nearly took down Volbeat next turn, so I went into Moonlight, hoping for an early wake up. Or a miss. Bonnie was quite done snoozing, so she just took down the croissant shaped rock type, winning me the easiest battle yet. Maxi also wanted to get his ass kicked a second time, so I obliged, but apparently I hit a bit too hard and made him colorblind. So naturally, the 8th gym leader and the champion of the region sent a 10 year old kid to handle the huge prehistoric beast that just emerged from the Earth's core. So I did. Literally. Bonnie and Clyde needed to show the world that they are not just two measly little buck types by slaying the ground titan Groudon. I mean, he just went for Slash, thankfully not getting a crit as Giga Drain started draining the Barney looking lizard out of energy. Groudon got replaced as the biggest threat in Hoenn. And no, don't bullshit me with that, Bonnie sweet up killed him! I had to cool off, so I went through the ice puzzle in the water type gym to fight the Hoenn champion of, I mean, the last gym leader Wallace. 
I had to save Giga Drain PP, so I went for the not quite fatal shockwave on Love Disc as it confused Bonnie with a kiss. And expecting the AI to heal, I decided to go for Giga Drain to take it out with one shot, but it didn't. So I did what I should have done before and encored Love Disc into Sweet Kiss. And Bonnie was so impressed by that play, she snapped out of confusion and finished the would-be Valentine solo run with a shockwave. Whiskash was out next, and a single Giga Drain made a fillet out of him. Celio got taken down by a combo of Giga Drain and Shockwave, and so did Seeking after setting up a rain dance. The nightmare-inducing Melodic was last, and admittedly Bonnie got kinda screwed by Waterpool's confusion. So Clyde tagged in. And even despite paralyzing, he got frozen by Melodic's Ice Beam. And you can see I just check my party, and I realize I have no out. Well, I guess that's farewell to attempt number two. We got really far, but... Just kidding, Clyde is an absolute legend and got turn one defrost. And since I clicked Moonlight, he escaped the next Ice Beam. Eventually, Melodic ran out of Ice Beams, so I could switch Bonnie back on Twister, because she wasn't dead to it and moonlight my way up to green HP, and then fry the last bulky fish with another critical hit just to flex. Normal hit would certainly kill from that range, and if it didn't, the next one would. I then, definitely not using the HM slave you saw in the party before, surfed up the waterfall in Evergrande City and made it through Victory Road, just to get stopped by Wally. <sighs> anyway, I safely made it to the Elite Four, and got ready for the final gauntlet of the run. Sydney's up first, but his team in Gen 3 games isn't really that scary because of the physical special split. Mariana is his lead, and single Miracle Seed boosted Giga Drain knocks her HP down to half. And after a takedown, second Giga Drain finishes her off, getting our first E4 kill officially on the board. Absol's out next, as usual. And Sydney's as predictable as always, and goes for Swords Dance, so I'm able to easily encore him into it, and knock him out with a single Giga Drain and a Shockwave. So much for the A's. Jack turns out third, and Clyde's secret powers hit him almost to death with a neat paralysis detail, getting Sydney to use his first full restore. As his HP goes back down, Jack turn tries to be sneaky with Lee Steam, so Bonnie comes out again. And I was sure Shockwave would kill. But Cacton's will to live is apparently still there, as he hangs on a sliver and delivers another faint attack. I just freely moonlight since he's completely harmless. One more weak shockwave is enough to shush the desert scarecrow for good. And Sydney sends out the mascot of San Jose's hockey team, who's about as weak as the team he represents, and gets one shot by Bonnie's shockwave. Shift Tree is the last hope for Sydney, immediately flinching Bonnie with fake out. And after a swagger self hit, I switch into Clyde on a double team, which like, find your own strategy. Clyde doesn't mess around and hits a crit secret power. Sadly, he misses the next one as Shifty tries to cheese me further and swaggers me on the next turn. Bonnie tags back in on the extra sensory, which does about half, so I moonlight as Shifty hits another swagger. Like, come on, neither of us like this switching game. I try to stay in and get yet another self hit into a critical hit extra sensory. So I go back to Clyde, who thankfully finally connects with the secret power, and puts an end to this. Further proving my two little crawlies are no ghost face by defeating Sydney. Well, I go straight to Phoebe, universally known as the easiest Hoenn E4 member. I thought Clyde Shadow Ball, so these ghosts are about to get murdered. Wait, does that even work if they're already dead? Never mind. The lead Dusclops is immediately put below half by the first Shadow Ball. But she hits a Confused Ray, so Bonnie comes out to take a Shadow Punch. And then it's right back to Clyde, on another Confused Ray. So back to Bonnie on a Shadow Punch crit, and then heal her with Moonlight, in case I have to switch again. Then back to Clyde on a Shadow Punch this time, so I go for a double team, since I want to keep him for the most of the battle in anyway. I then heal with Moonlight again, as another Shadow Punch hits, but so does Clyde's Shadow Ball, putting an end to the first Dust Box. Bennett gets almost one shot by the first Shadow Ball and retaliates with one of her own. I then know Phoebe will heal, so so do I. Another Shadow Ball brings Bennett back to red, and she tries to spite Clyde's balls, which like, come on. 
he swings one right back to defeat the another ghostly opponent, and Sableye comes out. I expected him to come out last, so now I have to switch to Bond. Which proves worth it since Sableye goes for a track, which I can easily encore him into, making him actively useless, as three shockwaves easily dispatch of the little gem collector. The second Bonnet enters, and I just click A again, then heal the shadow bow damage with Moonlight as she lowers my special defense this time, which really has no effect for the physical shadow ball in this gym, but I switch into Clyde anyway. He tanks the shadow ball and shows how much bigger his balls are by killing the poor Bonnet. That just leaves the Ace Dust Clops, so I heal by Moonlight as he also goes for Shadow Ball. So I start setting up double teams, and after getting to plus 6, I see my work was completely in vain as I crit the poor ghost, ending Phoebe's Elite 4 career. Next up is Glacia. She starts with Glalie here, so I lead with Bonnie and land his shockwave as he just sets up Hail. Meaning I can once again easily encore him into it and switch into Clyde for some double teams before the encore ends. I just barely miss a kill with Shadow Ball and he just sets Hail back up. Click another Shadow Ball and after getting hit by a pretty hard Ice Beam, I finish the first Glalie off, sending Celio out. And yeah, it's time for Bonnie again, who deals a massive chunk with Giga Dream, and then takes a critical hit surf and kills Celio with a second Giga Dream. Bringing her sister out, which one Giga Drain also brings into yellow, as she hits a hard hail boosted Blizzard. So I moonlight, hoping for her to miss, since Blizzard is not 100% accurate in hail in Gen 3 yet. But she doesn't, and hits another, after another, Four in total actually, but I just say fuck it and click Giga Drain to end her super accurate attack spree. The second Glalie is up next, and this one hasn't learned anything, so she goes for Hail turn 1. Once again getting trapped by Encore and hit by Shockwave, but when she's in red, Glacia just heals her, so I'm inclined to chip HP back down by Shockwave. Then she again wants to Hail, so Encore go brrrr. I eventually take down this miserable ice cube, leaving just the ace, big fat walrus to come out. And to nobody's surprise, she doesn't really fare well against Giga Drain, the first one taking half of her HP as she misses Blizzard. Because of the citrus berry, I don't have a kill on the next turn, as Wolverine hits a Blizzard, but it's fine as it does blow half, and Bunny hits back, defeating Glacia. Drake is the last Elite 4 member, and also the last struggle standing between me and Steven Stone. He leads with Shellgard, which is just nobody's favorite Pokemon. So I lead with Clyde and immediately go for double teams, because the weird Metal Sage Dragon has Rock Slap, which he apparently misses turn 1, and I go for a second double team as he protects. Secret Power paralyzes the poor guy right away, but as I hit another one, he manages to connect with the Rock Team, cutting my HP almost in half. Then he misses the next one as his HP slowly but surely goes down. I want Drake to waste a full restore on this instead of a more threatening member, so I go for Shadow Ball which doesn't quite kill as he hits another rock team, almost squishing Clyde. But Drake heals as I click Moonlight again, eventually paralyzes again and I don't want to waste secret power PP so I just click Shadow Ball which actually crits bringing the first Flygon out who immediately goes for Sandstorm, but since Bonnie isn't on the field, I decide just to damage it instead. As Flygon hits a Dragon Breath, Secret Power paralyzes again, meaning Drake should heal, but he doesn't. Thankfully, Flygon stays paralyzed and I'm able to take him out the turn after. The second one flies out and ironically misses a Sand Attack. We trade Secret Power and Shadow Ball for Flamethrowers, which like, not a good deal. Well, thanks to Moonlight and some lucky misses, because of my double team setup, Flygon eventually goes down. Then the terrifying Mens emerges. But he just goes for Fly, so I'm free to get my hits in as he misses all three of his attacks. Which wouldn't even kill me half the time. Until Mens ends up in red, and one more Shadow Ball turns that red into DEAD. And Altaria's there too, but Bonnie just takes care of her as she usually does, and Drake is defeated. And that means there is just one Steel Rock Specialized trainer, standing between me and my two little gangster beetles becoming the champions of this region. 
So let's get to it. Before we go though, I have to ask you to please subscribe. If you got this far into the video, you're probably enjoying it, and I'm sure you'll like what I have in store next. It's just one click on the red button down below, and it really helps my channel. Also, like the video. Back into the finale. I made Glide learn Brick Break instead of the super useful secret power. And in hindsight, I should have gotten rid of Shadow Ball. But I needed something for Metagross, and that was the safest bet. Steven leads with Skarmory, and I lead with Bonnie, as she looks at the Steel type bird, eyeing her like she's about to be his lunch. She puts all her might into the shotgun and crits, knocking out Skarmory in one hit. Playdoll comes out next, but Bonnie doesn't back off, and Giga Drain does almost half to the weird sandcastle, as he hurls rocks at her with ancient power, which thankfully doesn't give him the Omni Boost, and another Giga Drain brings it into red as he sets up Reflect, even heals him as Bonnie's bloodlust grows even stronger so she encores him into Reflect the next turn. After he's almost dead, Clyde steps in, defending his partner and setting up double team as Claydol misses an ancient power, and Shadow Ball takes him out, bringing out Cradle, Steven's only houseplant that he was able to keep alive, even though not for long. After two brick breaks, she manages to hit a hard ancient power. But Clyde hangs on, and I hope Steven heals her, so I heal as well. I then go for another double team as she again misses her attack. And another double team on the AP hit. But Moonlight brings Clyde back to green as Cradley misses again. And then, as he gets to full HP, Cradley hits her next move. But eventually, she runs out of ancient powers, and it's all over for the rocky plant. Just a few turns later, Clyde break breaks her apart, sending out the other part of the fossil duo. And screw Metagross, this thing is the real threat, with battle armor, ancient power, and the never missing aerial ice. Clyde lets Bonnie and her bloodlust take over to use moonlight and stall aerial aces, left and right, while doing some mild damage, which she does with grace, her anger growing stronger and stronger every hit she has to take. But then, out of nowhere, Armaldo goes for ancient power, and as Clyde watches in horror, his partner in crime, his soulmate, his silver wind, perishes under the rocks. Clyde fights right into the battle, double teaming to dodge the first ancient power, and then again to dodge the second one. Even despite half of my team being dead, I watch in amazement as Clyde waits out the full restore and uses his secondary attack, Shadow Ball, to take down the much bigger, stronger killer of his party. But he's not done quite yet. The unsuspecting Agron comes out as the rage-powered Brick Break brings him to yellow. He miraculously manages to hit Thunder as Clyde laments about his past luck. That angers him even more and he smashes Agron to pieces, but then he sees Metagross emerging from the Pokeball and sets eyes on his final target. After bringing him into red, Steven laughs and uses his final full restore to heal his ace. But, but Clyde doesn't have almost any of his moves left. And after bringing Metagross back to yellow with the final brick break, he starts struggling, humoring the Steel Titan as he taunts him by missing a Hyper Beam. But Clyde knows what he's doing. After all, he's done this before, and prevailed. With one last struggle, Metagross falls, and Steven accepts defeat, granting me the title of the new champion of Hoenn. But we all know who this badge really belongs to. And with that, the Hoennian adaptation of Bonnie and Clyde comes to an end. And so does this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.